What's up guys? I am talking about the comic books that I picked up on November 6, 2019, coming up next. What's up comic book fans? My name is Bruce Moreau and welcome to the channel and welcome to another episode of Comic Book Reviews, a weekly series where I tell you my thoughts and my reviews on the books that I picked up at my local comic book shop and this week was November 6th. 2019. That's right guys, we are in the month of November. Two months, or two months, stay with the right number of fingers. Two months left until the end of the year. Uh, Thanksgiving right around the corner, you know what's after that. We got Christmas and what's after that. New Year's Eve and then it's 2020. Insanity. Um, but let's not waste too much more time because I have 16 books to read, uh, get through this week. Uh, first of all, I read, <clears throat> excuse me, I read 14. I left two that I'm gonna read um, tonight or tomorrow during the day and that Stephanie and I will talk about on Friday on our live stream. That's 10 p.m. Eastern every Friday. We missed last Friday, I was away, I was at BlizzCon, but we'll be back this Friday. So I'm gonna quickly just show you guys those books that I will be reviewing Friday night and then I'll jump into the meat of the episode. All right, first up we have Magicians. Um, there it is. Um, Magicians, this was written by Layla Sturges in um, Art by Puis Bach. Um, I mainly picked this up because, I don't know, it's by a, uh, a product pub publishing company I don't really know, Arcania. Um, and it's about magicians, and I absolutely love magicians, so I figured why not give it a try. It's number one, it's an indie, it's uh, by a publisher, I have no idea who they are, so maybe it'll be good. Um, and Stephanie and I are always trying to pick up new indies, especially of her, because she's more into the indies than the uh, big superhero books, so. That's the first book. <clears throat> Second book we got is uh, Heist. Um, and the cover says Vault. Or, yeah, Vault presents Heist. I did look in the inside of this one when I was um, perusing the Al at Midtown Comics. And this um, story is about a group of thieves who try to steal a planet. And I was like, well, that's pretty cool. And Vault's been putting out some really good stuff lately, so I figured, let's give this a try. The art seems pretty cool. Cool. I like this cover. It's like has a very 80s, 80s vintage vibe to it. So uh, those are the two books Stephanie and I uh, will be talking about. Oh, and that's written by Paul Tobin and art by Ar Arjuna Susuni. So if you guys want to hear our reviews on those books, make sure you guys tune in Friday night, 10 p.m. Eastern. That today is Thursday morning, and on the video, this video will probably be going up Thursday midday. So just keep an eye out for that. Um, but yeah. Let's dive into the meat of the show, guys. All right, first one, we have Undiscovered Country. This is written by uh, my boy Scott Snyder and uh, Charles Sewell, and art by Giuseppe Kim, Kim, Camicoli and Danielle Orlandini. Orlandini? Man, butchering names already. But um, if you guys are a fan of the channel at all, if you've watched even one or a couple episodes where I review a book by Scott Snyder, I'm usually in love with it. He's an amazing writer. Charles Soule is also a great writer. Um, so I jumped on this, I jumped on board immediately. I was just like, all right, I'm on, I'm board for at least number one. And this was a very interesting read. So the whole concept behind this book is that um, America or the United States has separated itself from the rest of the world. And the rest of the world, there's plagues, diseases, There's it's being wiped out, decimated. Um, and uh, they're, they're, there's, it's, the rest of the world's divided up into two nations, I believe. And those two nations receive a, um, or an invite to the United States. And no one's been in, inside the United States for like 30 plus years. Um, and so they take the invitation because they say they have a cure for the main virus disease that's wiping out everyone. Um, that disease is called Sky, I believe. <clears throat> and um, they go over there and it's not exactly what they were, uh, what they thought was going to happen. Uh, so this was a really good read. It's probably like a seven, um, seven out of 10. It was, it was, it was a longer read because there's, there's a lot of setup. There's a lot of characters. Um, I think there's like eight mainish characters. Um, so there's a lot of buildup for character development and all those characters. But Scott Snyder and Charles Soule did a great job. The artwork is um, interesting. I didn't love the artwork per se. Um, it was okay. Uh, but the overall story is really interesting. Like this was really cool. This is like the second page of the book. It's like the helicopter trying to fly into the United States, and you see like, like 
they built up this giant wall and there's giant guns. Um, so overall, the concept is great. I'm really interested to see where this book goes. It's written really well. There is okay. I wish they had better artists on it, but it's still a really interesting book. I'm excited to see where it goes. Um, and there was some really good stuff at the end of the book that really hooked me. I thought it was, uh, yeah, it was definitely not exactly what I was thinking. So I'm excited to see where this goes. Definitely pick this book up. Like I said, it's like a seven um, out of 10. Um, and this is a great, great, great jumping in point. So um, the Undiscovered Country, number one, Scott and I are Charles Sewell. Definitely pick it up. All right, next up we have City, or sorry, Batman 82. Uh, this is getting really close to the end of the City of Bane storyline. We only have two or three issues left. I believe 85 is the last issue that Tom King is on. Um, so yes, the writer on this book is Tom King and art by Mikkel Janin. Mikkel Cannon's art is F-bomb amazing. I absolutely love him as an artist. Um, and this book was great. Um, for all those people, like the last couple of issues, or the last issue and this issue are action-packed, filled. Things are happening, things are moving. Uh, big, big things are happening. Um, I don't want to ruin anything because I want I, you guys should be reading this because this is really really fun. But <clears throat> I love that Batman and Catwoman are together and they're fighting together and they're a team. Um, <clears throat> I love what's happening with Thomas Wayne uh, and the art by Mikkel Janin is just so good. So for all of you guys who have been sticking with this book but thought it was slow and were, was not in love with the book, I'm pretty sure you guys will be really into this book are this issue in the last issue. Um, and DC actually put out some really cool covers. So as you can see, there's that, right? But, ready? It's like this clear plastic cover that reveals like you got Thomas Wayne, he's pulling the strings of Bane. So cool. They did this on, on a few issues. I wanted to pick up more um, because some of the uh, covers were just so cool that they were doing that for. Um, and I don't really want to show too much more because it's just so good to show one more page. It is just, I don't know, this was just an awesome, it was a really fast read because like I said, it really focused on the action of the book. Um, it read really quickly. It just, there was no, you didn't need to look more into it. It was just like in your face because Tom King likes to set things up and he like hints at things. There was no hinting here. It was just like right into the action, right into the meat of the show. Awesome book. Great writing, great story, amazing, amazing artwork in this book. Uh, John Romita Jr. Jr. was on the last few issues. He's okay, but he's like a particular look. Mikkel Janet is just freaking awesome. So yes, pick this book up. Not a great jumping in point. This would be an eight out of 10 for me. I wish there was a little bit more story in there, um, but you know, you've gotta have those big action packed um, issues and that was what this was. All right, next up, all right, so I've been hating so far on all the books spinning out of House of X and Power of X, um, and I was really excited for this one. Um, this is New Mutants number one. I couldn't find the, um, the cover A. I'm not sure what cover this is, but this is one of the variant editions. It's, I went to Mindow Comics, and they always have all the covers, but I couldn't find the cover A. Um, so this is following the New Mutants. Um, they are a team that is normally of Sunspot, um, Cannonball, Magic, Wolfsbane, Cypher. Um, there's been other people throughout all the different in incarnations of New Mutants. Um, Mondo, um, which is a character I don't know. Karma, I know a little bit. Chamber's a really cool character. Um, but you know, Ileana Rasputin, Magic is one of my favorite New Mutants. Sunspot is, he's so good. And they've been doing such a good job of using him. Um, he's like this super rich, uh, Mutant and he he bought AIM and I don't know, I really enjoyed what they did with him in the previous runs. Um, like USA Avengers, um, and what was it? Oh, there was a, another Avengers team that he led before that that was just so good. But this was one of the first issues that was, I would say, decent. This is probably like a 6.5 out of 10. It wasn't amazing. Um, what I feel these books are suffering from is that they're forcing these teams together and forcing them out to do things. Um, <clears throat> and putting them in situations where I think it's just silly. And that's what really happened in this book. I'm not going to get into the, the meat of the story. If you guys are interested in picking this book up, it is a decent read. Um, this is written, I forgot to tell you who that was. <clears throat> Ed Brisson, Brisson and Jonathan Hickman. Um, this is art by Rod Rias. Art in this book is awesome. I'll show you that in a second. 
But it just, I don't know, the beginning of this book was awesome. It was slowly building up some really cool elements with Krakoa and Mondo um, and Cypher. And that, that was really good. It was just, it was, I felt like it was starting to finally feel like a Jonathan Hickman book again uh, with Jonathan, uh, with Ed Brisson helping out. And it just, by the end of the book, it seemed to be going places where it just seemed forced um, and silly. And it's, they were forcing the team into a spot they didn't really need to be in. Um, so, like I said, it's a decent book. The beginning is great. The ending is not so great, in my opinion. Uh, for all you fans of the X-Men who are loving all these books, I'm so happy for you, but I'm just not, not loving it. I am gonna give this book a few more issues, especially if Ed Brisson, Jonathan Nickman are gonna stand this book together. Hopefully it will just stay a good and get better book. Um, but Rod Reyes' art, man, is so good, yeah. So this is some of the stuff with Mondo. I guess he can like, uh, when he touches things, like his body can absorb them and do things with them. And so he was touching Grokoa and Cypher was trying to ask him to communicate with Grokoa. It was just really cool. Uh, his artwork is just beautiful and fits the New Mutants so, so well. Uh, so again, this is a 6.5 um, out of 10, not quite a 7, um, great jumping in point. If you are a fan of the new, new Mutants, give this book a chance, it's, it's, it's hopefully going to get better, and this is a decent book. Alright, next book, I was really, really excited for this book. This is Strange Skies over East Berlin, number 2. This is actually a book that came out last week, but I completely missed it, but so I, want, I still want to get this, my review out for this. This is written um, by Jeff Loveless, Loveness, and art by Lissandro... Esteran, uh, <laughs> read it down here. Um, really interesting book. Um, this is set back in like the 60s or 70s um, when the Wall of Berlin was still up um, and some crazy things were happening with aliens. I don't think I'm spoiling it. If you read the first issue, you know what happens. And it's just a really interesting, creepy book dealing with spies and aliens. And it's just written really, really well. Uh, this was a really enjoyable book. Um, the artwork is beautiful. It definitely fits like the tone of the the, the writing really well and the overall story. Um, it is just, I don't know. The way the, the writer, uh, Jeff Love, Loveness, is he does a great job of building characters and who they are in a short amount of time. So you get really engaged to these characters and who they are. Um, so setting up new characters for him seems to be really easy and they put them in, they put these new characters in which makes the main character which I'm blanking on his name read too many books um, but put it in, when this new character enters you kind of already know how this in, the character should interact with him and I don't know it was just really good um, great read really quick read um, I shouldn't say really quick it was a really quick enjoyable read it just you gobbled it up so fast because it was so good um, I would give this a 7 out of 10. Really great indie book. I would really suggest you guys picking this up. This is by Boom Studios. Again, Boom and Vault have been putting out some really, really good stuff. If you guys haven't checked out um, what they're putting, uh, what books they're putting out each month, go check them out because they are great studios that are putting out some really, really good books. All right, this is Space Bandits number 5 of 5. So this is the final issue of Space Bandits. This is written by Mark Millar and art by Matteo Scalera. Um... It's a little bit of an oversized book, really enjoyable ending to the story. Um, kind of, you could kind of see where how it was gonna end. You kind of, you kind of knew the two main um, heroes were going were going to come out and they were going to win. But it was still a really, I I really enjoyed this book. It was super fun. Um, he has that whole deal with Netflix. I'm hoping um, this comes out on Netflix. So this would be a really fun space journey. Probably really expensive because there'd be lots of costumes or lots of, a lot of CGI. But it'd be super fun. Um, yeah, and that's all I'm really gonna say about this book. It was a really fun issue. I like that it was oversized because he, he was able to put more of the story. He didn't have to try to wrap it up within 24 pages. And the art by Matteo, on point, all the whole run, it was super fun. I love just I loved all the characters in this book. Um, well, that's something that Mark Millar does really well. He does he he builds really really good characters that are interesting and engaging, and you want to root for them or you want to hate them because they're such dirt bags. Um, and there was characters that you hated in this book and that you wanted to see bad things happen, and sure enough, they did they ended up happening. 
Um, and there's a really cool twist at the end of this book, I don't want to ruin it, that ties into another series um, under Middle World. So that was really cool to maybe see that this continues either in that book or maybe there's a combined book. So overall, th that was really cool. It was just, to me, it wasn't the best book out there. This wasn't like Mark Millar's best work at all. It was just a fun book with two strong female characters and it was just a good read. If you're looking for a fun, interesting read, pick up Space Spin once it comes out in trade. It's really, really enjoyable. Uh, and uh, Mateo's art is just it's gorgeous. Um, next up, we have, um, I was gonna say, it doesn't say Legion Doom, but this is Justice League number 35. Um, this is another one of those really, really cool covers. This is written by Scott Snyder and James Tinney in the fourth, and art by Francis Menopole in Hi Fi. Um, so, this is the main, or the plastic cover, and we pull it off, and we see Perpetua. Um, <clears throat> this was pretty cool. Uh, wasn't great. This is probably like a six out of five. I feel like these issues that are coming towards the end of Scott Snyder's run on this are um, they're slowing down in the amazing story storytelling. They're kind of just kind of like it feels like everything is just kind of all right. Checkpoint. Hitting this checkpoint. All right. We know we need to get to this and these things need to happen and check it off. There hasn't been any really big surprises um, so far in the last few issues. So they've been okay. Um, I love Francis Menopole's art. It's really beautiful artwork. Um, and this is not a bad book at all. It's just, there wasn't anything really fun and interesting. There was a really cool scene where, where Perpetua, um, if you aren't, aren't reading in the last issue, she, she came to full power um, and she went and she destroyed a universe in this. And there's some really cool scenes on that universe uh, with some really cool characters. That was really fun. But the rest of the issue was, eh, I'm not loving what's happening with Hawkgirl. That whole what's happening with her just seems very blah, is the best way I can say it. It's just not, not that interesting. It's kind of like, why would you do that? You're a superhero. Uh, but overall, this is a very enjoyable book. You should be reading Justice League. It's one of the, it's the tent pole of the D, uh, DC universe. It's Scott Snyder, so a majority of these issues have been great. It's just the last couple have been, mm. and Francis Manipal's art is so good. Um, this is some of Hi-Fi's work. <clears throat> it's just overall a decent book, like I said, 6, 6.5. It's on the lower end of the good stuff, but it was still a really fun read. Um, not a great chip bring in point, issue 35, obviously, so, uh, and we are getting close to the end, end of Doom. Um, which I think we wrap I'm not sure what the number is. Maybe I'll find that up. If I can find that, I'll put that down here. But let's keep going because I got a lot more books to go through. Uh, next up, we have Young Justice number 10. This is written by Brian Michael Bendis, art by John Tim Timms and Nick Darrington. Um, this continues to be a good book. It's not a great book. I'm definitely enjoying this a lot more than the first like six or seven issues. Ever since they've gone to the... Um, the universe with the, the the bad Justice League, I can't think of their name. Ultra, has like the Ultron Batman, or Superman. I'll, no, Crime Syndicate, there it is. It's had the, again, 16 books in one one day was a lot. Um, the Crime Syndicate, and there was a evil Young Justice team, and they're fighting, it's just really fun. It's Brian Michael Bendis, He's, it, it was really enjoyable. This issue did, um, dealt a lot with Jenny Hicks. Last issue dealt a lot with Team Lantern. Um, I like that he's still character building these new characters, which is really great because Jenny Hicks is a great character, um, descendant of Jonah Hex. Um, and the ending of this book, which is super fun, we saw um, Tim Drake take on a new costume and a new code name, I guess. Um, <clears throat> we got to see some great stuff with Batwoman, who is actually Stephanie Brown. Um, there's a great scene at the very, very end, like one whole page. Um, you know, overall, you're, he's just doing a better job of building this team together. He's giving each character um, issues and, and giving them a, a more background, more story, more more reason to care for them. And I felt like the first few issues, there wasn't a lot of that. And this is get, uh, we're finally getting that. And that's why these books are getting better. Um, so it's Brian Michael Bendis. He's a great writer. This is a good book, not a great book. Seven out of 10 is probably where this would land. Is this a great jumping in point? No, because this is the end of them. They're get, they went back to um, Earth, their Earth, at the end of this issue. So 
it's the end of that story arc and we're gonna start a story arc in the next issue. So if you are gonna jump in, probably the next issue is gonna be your jumping in point. So not a good jump point in this one, but good book. Um, did I show artwork? I don't think I did. Yeah, this is just really good. Really, really, this this was a really fun book and I, I love the characters. Impulse, Superboy, um, Tim Drake, uh, I love I like do love Ginny Hex and T Lander is pretty interesting. Um, yeah, it's just a really good team of characters. All right, up next is a really fun book. This is Batman Universe number five. I believe this is five or six. So there's one more issue left. Um, this does have that annoying? This does have that annoying price tag of four ninety nine. I don't know why. Um, it's just a normal Batman book, but. Again, this is written by Brian Michael Bendis. Two books in a row. I think they have, and the next one is also Brian Michael Bendis. Um, and this is art by Nick Darrington. Hands down, just a fun book. I'm gonna give this an eight out of 10 because this is just super, excuse me, super enjoyable every single time I read it. Um, it's fun, it's quirky, um, it's not dark and serious, it's lighthearted, it's, it's just a really enjoyable read. It makes me laugh, it makes me smile every single time I read it. And it's just a really interesting story. And Nick Darrington's art is so good. I'm gonna show you this one panel. Um, there's no words on it. It's just a bunch of action with him, with Batman and Nightwing storming a submarine. And I follow Nick Darrington on Instagram and he did a, uh, Instagram and Twitter and I think he tweeted this out. But uh, he tweeted how um, Brian Michael Bendis told him to draw or asked him to draw this uh, scene. And it was just a really funny tweet. And this is just a great panel. Oh my God, it's so fun. Or dual panel, double panel, two page panel, whatever it is. It was just, again, if you're looking for a fun, not dark, lighthearted Batman story, you're gonna get it here. It's just, it's so, so good. Um, next up, another Brian Michael Bendis book. We have Legion of Superheroes, number one. This is written by Brian Michael Bendis and art by Ryan Sook. Ah, uh, I was really hoping this was gonna be great. And this was maybe a four out of 10. Um, I really enjoyed um, Legion of Superhero Millennial one and two. Uh, it dealt more with like a single character and it built that character story in like over the, it, over the full issue. So you really get to know that and know that character and be interested in that character. In this issue, it was too much at once. They were just, there was, a lot of stuff happening at the beginning of the book, and then Superboy, which is like, the, I think we're gonna be one of the temple characters of this book, um, which is Jonathan Kent, which is Superman, and Lois Lane's son, who has superpowers, is asked by the Legion of Superheroes to come a thousand years into the future and join the team. He does, and it's just, I don't know, it was kind of sloppy, and again, so many characters. And if you, have, if you don't know Legion of Superheroes, there's just, a lot and there's a lot going along he tried to set up i think just too much in this first issue it was messy it was sloppy um not brian's best work i really hope this gets better i think he needs to take things a lot slower build characters up give them a story and introduce us to these characters a lot slower because a lot of these people who are picking this book up might not know the legion of superheroes i mean i read this the Legion when it's last run, so I, I kind of know some of these recurring characters, but I don't know, this was just too much too fast for me. Um, Ryan Slick's art was pretty good. Um, I mean, look at uh, just the amount of people in this two page spread. So much, and there's so much words, and everyone's trying to talk, and, they, and the people in the 31st century talk a little weird, so it's, it's you gotta get used to that, and it's just, I don't know. Not a, not a great issue for number one. I might give this one or two more issues, so this might be my only one. Maybe one or two more, because again, I want to like this, because I do like the Legion of Superheroes, it's just, I didn't love it. Um, so it's hard for me to suggest you guys pick that book up. Um, if you're a Legion fan, give it a, sh <clears throat> give it a shot. You might enjoy it more than I do, but if you're not, and you don't know the Legion, I would say pass. All right, next up, we have Lois Lane, number five. This is written by Greg Rucka, and art by Mike Perkins, again, a great, great book. This was a seven out of 10. Um, it's not on the, the higher end of the books, um, like nine or eight or nine or 10. This was like a seven, it's just a solid, solid book. It continues to be really interesting. I love um, what they're doing with Lois Lane and I love this whole detective story that she's trying to uncover um, about all these journalist murders. 
I know I take I drink a huge co coffee every morning. Um, I will say the one downside of this book is the art. Um, it seemed a little sloppy at times. Lois Lane's face changed throughout the issue, even though it's all written drawn by Mike per Perkins, and it just it just seemed a little sloppy at times. So it kind of distracted from the story a little bit for me, but. I love uh, R R Renee Montoya. Um, she's a female question. I love um, her in this book. She's just a really great, interesting detective. She kicks people's ass. Um, and I love that everyone um, who sees Lois expects Superman to be around somewhere. And they hint to that some places. And she's trying to like dig into the story and people are scared to talk because, you know, what's going on and, you know, everything that's going on around her. So it's a great, intriguing, uh, mystery detective book. It's just really good. I'm really, really enjoying this. I highly recommend uh, any non-superhero fans out there that are looking to maybe jump into DC or Marvel, give this issue, or not this issue, this book a try. It's very light on superheroes. It's light on the... Ma our magical universe of DC and Marvel. There's not a lot of crazy that happens in this book. This book is really grounded with humans and there is, you know, obviously Superman's out there and other superheroes are there, but this is a really great book for anyone who doesn't love superheroes. I really, really enjoy that book. All right, next up we have The Amazing Spider-Man number 33. This is written by Nick Spencer and art by Patrick Gleason. Love, love Patrick Gleason. So glad he's at Marvel. Um, I wish he was still at DC, but I'm, I'm glad he's at Marvel. It's giving Marvel a gr another great artist to put on books like Spider-Man because I haven't enjoyed the artists that have been on Spider-Man that with Patrick Leeson on it makes the story that much enjoyable. I loved this issue. This was like a 7 out of 10. This was a really good issue for Spider-Man. Um, <clears throat> it's um, dealt a lot with Silver Sable. Um, I loved what Don, Dan Slott did with Silver Sable and Spider-Man. There's a whole team up, team up, some bad things happened to Silver Sable during a mission he, she was on with Spidey. This went all the way back to there and tied that in with that and tied that in with the last issue. I didn't see that see that coming. Spider-Man's sister's still there. Uh, the chameleon um, ties all the way back in with, oh, who, who did it tie back in? Um, oh yeah, Doctor Doom. It's, and then what's happening in the Doom book, which I'm, I have coming up. Uh, it's just, Lots of twists, lots of turns, beautiful, beautiful artwork, um, some action-packed stuff. Some, they, uh, the whole beginning of the book was about Spider-Man 2099, which I know this is going to tie into. Um, you get some great shots there. So, if you're looking for a chance or a time to jump into Spider-Man, maybe pick up the last issue and this issue, maybe two issues before in this issue. Really, really good stuff. Nick Spencer is heating up. I'm really, really enjoying this book now. Um, yeah, it's just it's just really, really fun. Um, yeah, that's it for that book. All right, three more books to go. Let's hurry, let's do this. All right, guys, up next we have Daredevil number 13. This is written by Chip Zdarsky in art by Marco Cicchetto. Hands down, highlight of the week. This book was freaking amazing. This is I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10 because it was so good. I love the situations that... Um, Chip Zdarsky is putting the Kingpin in, what he's putting Daredevil in. He's doing great development with both of these characters. In the last issue, Kingpin was at this big dinner with the high, this high society, excuse me, people, like the big money makers in the country who make big, big decisions, you know, for everything because they have so much money for the world, for the United States. And it was a big moment for him because he was like, you know, he wants to leave crime. He wants to be a big player in his own right. Um, and at this dinner, this guy is like berating him and basically teasing him, poking at him, trying to poke the bull. Uh, Kingpin relieves himself from the table. This is all in the last issue. So I'm not, not ruining anything for this issue. And he ends up killing the guy in the bathroom because the guy keeps poking him and like um, berating him. And Kingpin just loses it. And this the whole is like a lot of this issue is dealing with the aftermath of that, and it's written so well. I love the stuff with Electric, so or Electra and Daredevil, because Electra's being the, the new stick for Daredevil, reteaching him how to be himself after he <clears throat> died and came back to life. 
Um, so that stuff is really good. The stuff with the uh, police officer Cole is excellent. And the art in this book is just on point. It's just, it's perfect for Daredevil. Love this book. If you're not reading this book, you guys should hands down be written Chip Zdarsky's um, Daredevil. It is just so, so good. Not a great jumping in point, but this is an amazing, amazing book. All right, next up we have Doctor Doom number two. This is written by uh, Christopher Cantwell and art by Salvador La Roca. Um, interesting book. I'll give it a seven out of 10. It was interesting. I'm not sure exactly where they're going, but this did have some really good moments in it um, with Doctor Strange and strangely enough, Silver Sable. Um, this robot uh, called Herbie, which is an android built by Reed Richards serving eyes for the Fantastic Four, but he has his own like mind and it was actually uh, pretty funny. Um, uh, who else is in this book? Uh, Morgan Le Fay was in this. Uh, there's some good stuff from that. Blue Marvel's in this, and he is an awesome, awesome character. So I'm excited to see where that goes. And Salvador Roca's artwork is so gorgeous. Um, yeah, it's an interesting book. Uh, I love Doctor Doom. I especially loved. Um, oh my god, I'm gonna say the wrong name. I'm gonna say Superior Iron Man, but I don't think that's it. But it's where. When Tony Stark was gone, uh, Doctor Doom took over the role of Iron Man. That series was awesome, and this is kind of spinning out of that a little bit. Um, and it's just, it's a really good book. I would definitely suggest you guys um, should be reading Doctor Doom. It's only, this is issue number two, so this is a good jumping in point, if you, especially if you can find issue number one. Um, yeah, it's a good book. And art, like I said, the art by Salvador Oroca is just so good. So it's great art, good writing, it's Doctor Doom. How can you not be reading Dr. Doom? All right, last book of the week. I'm sorry this issue, this episode was so long. There's just so many books to get through. Um, all right, this is X-Force number one. This is written by Benjamin Percy and art by Joshua Kassara. <coughs> Excuse me. But I think this is probably the best book so far of all the books that have spun out out of House of X and Power of X. It's still, still not great though. Um, it's definitely a, this was like an oversized issue. So there's a lot that went on. Um, they did some character setup of some really interesting characters. Like, uh, I don't know who that much about Black Tom. He must be an evil mutant that is on Krokoa because all mutants aren't are invited to live there. He was actually the most interesting character of this book. So I, maybe because I don't know who he is. Um, but on the cover of the book, we got Black Tom, Beast, um, Colossus, Wolverine, Quinn Choir, which I can't wait to see him in this because this is X-Force, so they kill, and I love Quentin Choir. Domino, um, uh, Jean Grey, and I don't know who that chick is. This one right here. I don't know who that is. I'll find out who that is. But Beast kills now? I didn't know that he killed. I thought Beast was a scientist and all about saving life, but he definitely killed in this book. Um, which was a little out of character, but <clears throat> I will the art was good um, So that was nice to see on uh, Joshua Kassara I, I Just think everything seemed to move too fast. That's what's happening a lot with these books there like I said in the um, New Mutants the beginning was nice and slow it built and it gave moments for to each character that were going to be in the book Especially if you didn't know a lot about those characters it kind of gave you a little hint of who they were and this kind of just, these are a lot of big name characters and you should, but you know, Black Tom's not a huge character. Uh, everyone else is fine, but this is a whole new world. Give give time to build and, and have things happen. And this book, a lot of stuff happened really, really fast. Um, yeah, that's I think all I'm gonna say about this book. It was good. This is the one book I'm definitely gonna give more issues to because it was fun. I enjoyed it. Um, it did move too fast, but overall it was a good book. I'm excited to read more of it. Uh, I can't wait to see Quentin Choir. I'm excited to see more Black Tom. I'm, I really felt he worked really well with this with this book. I'm interested to see how he's gonna work out with the team. The end of the ending of this book was interesting. It it, it kind of felt like they were trying to make it this big shock, but if you read House of X and Power of X, you know exactly what's going to happen. So 
overall interesting, fun, the best book of all, in my opinion, the best book from of all the books spinning out of the house of X and Power of X, so you should pick this up. If you're gonna read any of the books, it'd be this, X-Force, and then X-Men, and then maybe New Mutants, and the rest don't read. <laughs> it's my opinion. My opinion. Um, but yeah, that's gonna do it for this week, guys. So apologies for the, the long video, and there will you'll notice a cut right around Daredevil, my camera only records for like 20 minutes or 25 minutes or something and then automatically shuts off for some reason. Damn Canon. But yeah, that was an awesome big week. Um, thank you guys so much for sticking around. If you guys liked what I talked about in this video, make sure you guys let me know down in the comments below. If you guys didn't like what I said about these books, let me know it's down in the comments below because I'm really interested to hear you guys' thoughts. Let me know what you're reading. I'd love to hear what you guys are reading, especially if they're not books that I am. Maybe, I should go check those out. Let me know down in the comments below. If you guys are not following me on social media, make sure you are. Links, things down here. Um, and yeah, if you guys like this issue, or like this issue, if you like this, like this video, make sure you guys uh, hit that like button. If you guys are not just subscribed, consider subscribing to the channel because I will continue to bring at least the weekly comic book reviews. I try to bring in some new stuff each week. If there are other, video, other videos that you guys would like me to produce, like me a uh, thing on the news or a, more more TV or movie reviews. I do my best to get those out more. It's just Steffi and I have very limited time to watch TV. Um, but if you guys want more, we'll do our best to get you guys more. And don't forget about our live stream every Friday, 10 p.m. Eastern, Comics and Beer. Steffi and I, we talk comic book news. We talk a, couple, a few comics that we read together. And it's just a good time to hang out with us. So. That's going to do it for this week, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks so much for watching this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.